The Canberra Raiders had a season of ups and downs, but the main reason to celebrate is yes, Jared Croker got the 300 games. But there was controversy in that. Should he have got arrested and um, played the game before to celebrate the 301 game later at Canberra? I mean, um, they lost to the Warriors in the end in their 300 games, so really, he got, he got beaten off one game. And then Ricky Stewart, all of a sudden, just cut Jared Croker out of the team altogether. What's doing? Um, absolute craziness. Jack Whiten was moved to centre. It all just went pear-shaped um, for the Canberra Raiders. It was a bad way to finish their season. It really just imploded on them. And even though they were courageous against the Knights um, at times, at the end of the day, they probably got where they deserved to finish. The Canberra Raiders finished 8th in 2023, and this is going to be the season review of the Canberra Raiders. Yes, good old the Vikings. Let's get to it right here, right now, on Barry Charles Footy Show. Yes, well, the Canberra Raiders, we'll just have a look at a few of the highlights. Um, their for and against, um, so their four, four average every game was 20, and against was 26%. Their completion rate was at a 76%. Um, over the season, top tackler, or Corey Horsburgh, had a great season, 850, 855 tackles, getting his origin debut. Congratulations to you, Corey Horsburgh. Um, top point scorer, Jared Croker, 130. He could have got way more than that if he was given more game time. Obviously, you can see I'm frustrated with that. He was good enough to play. Well, he wasn't playing bad. I don't know what was happening there. Top try scorer, Jordan Rapana at only 11. That's a very bad season for the Raiders in that. But they still made the finals, so you can't complain. But really, you probably want any more. Best player, Joseph Tapane was the best player of the year. And Ata Mariota on, on debut gets the rookie of the year. But let's get to it. Um, obviously, um, the Raiders start the season very well, winning three of their first four games. Um, yeah, well... I mean, sorry, they lost three close games in 1-1. So that, was, that wasn't a great start. If they had done that at the start of the season, they would have been in the top four. Just losing those couple of games by a couple of points, and I think the other one by 10, they would have been in the top four. But that's the way it went. Um, but if we're looking at um, the worst game of the season, well, losing to the Panthers 53 points to 12 at home, that was a bit of an embarrassment for them. Very much embarrassing, but then it got worse against the Storm away. 48 points to two. That was an absolutely dreadful game from the Raiders, that's for sure. Um, the other day, um, where do you celebrate a good one um, with them? It was a bit of a up and down sort of season for them. Um, but being the Rabbitohs, 33 points to 26. I thought it was a big game in the context of the season for the Rabbitohs. Instance, that's when the Rabbitohs got their loss and went downhill from there after leading the top of the table at that point. So the Raiders beat the top of the table team at the time. So I'm going to say that was their best win of the season for the Raiders. Um, but it all, to me, is all on why was Jared Croker not playing? They moved Jack Whiten around like a yo-yo. Um, the Sebastian Chris Dancer at fullback when they had Xavier Savage there. Well, let's get to it. Charles Nickel Clocks there was a big loss. Underestimated. Should have been playing even last season. I don't know what was happening with Ricky Stewart. Obviously, when he goes off players, he goes off them for good. Because Charles Nickel clocks there, to me, was absolutely gun for the Warriors this season. And surely must have been. Sebastian Chris did quite well. So I don't know if he's actually the problem here. But um, all their eggs were on Xavier Savage, and it did not work. Um, he's had some injury concerns as well. But will he be the answer in 2024? Will they put him back in there? Will Sebastian Chris stay there? Um, no Jack White in there, so what's going to happen there? Are they going to go downhill in a big way? Well, we will see. It was interesting that they're probably trying to get Blake Austin to play six. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who the Raiders go with there. Next season, it's going to be interesting. Um, but other things that come out of it, Jack White retired from State of Origin, and so did, well, supposedly retired. Might be back next year. Um, with um, also Josh Papalihi designed to retire. Why? You're on the top of the game. Um, he has some injury concerns, Josh, properly, and probably not, not up to his top standard that we'd expect from him. So a little bit disappointing. But um, but what do we say about the Raiders' season? It was one of those that 
was they were in the top eight most of the time once they got there but and but then had some big losses that really didn't help the for and against which gave other teams a chance to put pressure on them um but yeah to me it's, it's probably overachieving to be honest i really do think the raiders overachieved in 2023 so um obviously if you make the finals you obviously want to continue to go on but i think they overachieved the raiders for the team they got even with to the mean they got one they haven't got that stronger team at all like if you really look through this team um while well, jared croak is gone jack white is gone so you take those out you got fogarty he's okay he's not no star player um who you got tapane and josh papalihi that's about it um there's really the star power you got jordan rapana's a bit of x factor as well but he's on the bad side of 30 as well um big issues with the raiders the dad's army is gone you obviously got Elliot whitehead as well you got these older heads um i'm sorry i might be saying putting horsborough and hudson young not star players they potentially are star players but they haven't done a year in year out yet if they do that then i'll agree but they still got some work to be done there so their forward pack isn't too bad okay the forward pack but the back line absolutely not up to nrl standard um, Tomoko, he played all right, so he, there's a positive there, but they're really, really struggling in the back line. No six, fullback's a bit of an issue. I mean, the back line as well. I mean, it is really, um, the Raiders, you know you get grit from this team generally, and they really do grit and play tough for you, but yeah, they are missing some star power, and I just don't know if Ricky Stewart can get these young people. It just seems to be a struggle for uh, Ricky Stewart to get these gun players here. Um, but yes... Obviously, the Viking clap, isn't that just one of the best things of the year? It's the best thing, I think, of any team in the competition. I like the Viking clap. We should have it in every game. <laughs> Not really, but um, but every team should have their own thing. But I, I like the Viking clap. It's just one of those great things from the Raiders. Um, but yeah, my m most disappointment of this season is Jared Croker. I think he should have played at least 310 games this season. And even before that, he wasn't really told he wasn't good enough by Ricky Stewart. He should retire. Um, it's sad for me because I think he could have probably got close to he probably would have got close to 350 um, if he wasn't dropped by Ricky Stewart and all the likes because he still had the talent to play I think there's a few times he got carved up defensively but once you go down to New South Wales Cup grade it can sometimes make it harder to improve you sort of can go backwards because you're not taking on the best teams and then when you go up to the other level it's another level again so I feel a bit sorry for Jared Croker in his last couple of years because he actually was but fitter but was not getting game time so but good for him to bounce back because i did predict that he might not get the 300 so uh, thankfully for him he did get the 300 and it wasn't injury plagued out gone so congratulations on getting the 300 jared croker um but yeah to me um eighth place for the raiders was okay but nothing to worry at home but in 2024 i see them going very much backwards no whiten um I think it's going to be a struggle for this team. I really do. And Jared Croker retiring. He might not be a major on the field, but off the field, he was one great player, Jared Croker. Very, very clubman-like, and he's going to be sorely missed. But um, for me, I just feel like Jared Croker should have got more game time. But I think when, you, when you're going forward, the missing Jack Wyden is going to be a huge hole in this team. He was the heart and soul of the team for the last 10 years. And without him, it's going to be a long, long journey for the Raiders. And I am expecting something very bad for the Raiders in 2024. Would it be the wooden spoon? Well, you'll have to find out later. But they'll be, they'll be definitely in the conversation for it. But um, Raiders seem to find a way to not be anywhere near that sort of level. Um, but then we will see. But that's the Raiders um, season review. Just a little bit of a recap of a little bit of the events, all the things, what's happened. Um, obviously, and it's one thing I had I had to say. I totally forgot about it. Jack Whiten. Yes, Jack Whiten biting. I, I think this was a big blow from the NRL. Again, I say sometimes they're weak when it comes to some things, including drugs and this sort of stuff, even, even other stuff. I think if any of this, if they're proven guilty on anything, biting should be like eight weeks at least. Just standard eight weeks, not what two weeks or whatever ridiculous the thing was. It was craziness they want this in the game well just leave it keep going um it was the absolute bite and the absolute disgrace and yeah, that's all she wrote but anyway that's the barry charles footy show remember to like and subscribe to the channel 
And I'll be back with more of these videos as we continue in the off season as we get ready for the big ones. But we still got a little bit of international football to go. There's not much left. But let's have a great day out there.